join kids hat family Wasn't last night's slumber party fun, Tofu? Oh, I had a blast. Let's do it again. I agree, but I noticed that you weren't being very nice to cousin Rob. You were always with your friend Josh. Cousin Rob started it. Started what? Josh is one of my best friends. And cousin Rob told me that he didn't like Josh as much as I did. There's nothing wrong in that, Tofu. I don't understand. Why not? Shall I explain it to you with a story? Yes, I want to hear the story. A very long time ago, there lived a mighty lion in a jungle. One day, he went to the river to drink water. But his leg got stuck in the thick slushy mud of the river bank. No matter how much he tried, his leg wouldn't come out. He called out for help. But alas, there was none. And so he remained stuck in the mud. After a few days, a kind jackal came to the same spot of the river to drink water. He saw the lion stuck in the mud. Your Majesty, are you all right? No, Jackal. I am stuck in the mud. I cannot move. I have been here for days now. Give me a moment, Your Majesty. Let me see what I can do. The Jackal quickly crossed over to the riverside where the lion was stuck. With his paws, he dug out the mud where the lion's leg was caught. I think your leg should be free now. Please try and come out. The lion tried to move, but he couldn't. His leg had become stiff after being in the same position for so many days. Seeing this, the jackal made more efforts to free the lion. He pushed him and pulled him till he finally came out of the mud. The lion was very happy to be able to move freely after so many days. Thank you, kind jackal. You have saved me. You are welcome, your majesty. Now, I must get back home. Where will you go? Why don't you come and stay with me? You've saved me and now you are my friend for life. The jackal accepted the lion's offer and both grew their own families. But they continued to live together and hunt together. Their children would even play together. But the lioness did not like the friendship between the jackal and the lion. And she conveyed the same to the lady jackal. told me 
that the lion does not want us to live here with him and his family. Hearing this, the jackal was very upset and went to see the lion. I thought we were friends. But if you did not want my family and me to live here with you, you should have told me so. Instead, you conveyed your message to me through the lioness and the lady jackal? My friend, I don't know what you are talking about. We are leaving. No, my friend, don't leave me and go. I have not done anything of that sort. I want you to stay with me. The jackal understood what had happened. I am sorry, friend. I understand your sincerity and love towards me. I think I judged you too quickly. It is not you who wants me gone. But the lioness, I shouldn't live here any longer. No, you don't have to go. I will speak to the lioness. No, don't worry about it. My family and I will live in another home. But you and I will still remain friends. It is best for both families. Though the lion was very sad, he agreed. And so, the jackal made another home for himself and his family. But his friendship with the lion remained. They met every day, went on hunts together and shared lives good and bad till the end of their lives. The lioness didn't like the jackal even though the lion and he were best friends. And she knew that the jackal had saved the lion once upon a time. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you Tofu. Sometimes you may like someone very much but your family may not feel the same way about them. Oh, I get it now. Let's call cousin Rob and others for one more slumber party. I promise I will behave better this time. Dear, I have good news. Really? What is it, Tofu? Tell me quickly. I have the option to become a part of either of the teams. Both teams want me for the next week's match. That's wonderful. So, what have you decided? Uh, I haven't decided as yet, Tia. I'm thinking I should see which of the two teams does better in the next few games? Then I will join the winning team. Uh-uh, that's not the right approach, Tofu. It shows you to be cunning and disloyal. Why? Well, let me tell you the story of the bat, the beast and the birds. The Bat, the Beasts and the Birds Once upon a time, in a dark jungle, there broke a dangerous fight between the beasts and the birds. 
we will not tolerate the beasts anymore. They feed on us, make praise out of our children and behave as if they are the rulers of the jungle. Yes, yes, yes we, we agree, agree with you, our leader. But we need more support from other birds. Currently, we are losing. We must reach out to every bird in the jungle to join our army. We shall find strength in numbers. What do you say, Minister? Everybody has agreed. We just need to ask the bats now. I am sure the bats will help us win. Very well then, invite the leader to our court. The bat leader was invited to the court of the leader of the birds. Bat, we are in a war against the beasts. Why don't you join us? The bat leader wasn't sure that it wanted to join an army that was losing. I am honored by your offer, but I am afraid I cannot join you. I am after all a beast. A few days passed. The beasts started losing. We need to grow our army, otherwise the birds will defeat us. They drink from our lakes, live in our trees, yet they behave as though they have more rights on the jungle than us. Minister, who can help us win? My leader, the only ones who have not joined the fight as yet are the bats. We could ask them to join us. Very well. Invite the bat leader to our court. And so the bat leader was invited to the beast's court. Bat! The war between the bird and the beasts of the forest is at its peak now. Whoever wins this last battle shall win the war and rule over the jungle. Why don't you join us and help us win? You too will rule the jungle along with us. But the bat was once again unsure that it wanted to join the losing side with the beasts. I am honored by your offer, but I cannot join you as I am a bird. Just before the final battle was to take place, both the bird and the beast leaders met. They were both upset by the losses their armies were suffering and decided to make peace with one another. The war was called off. We will not fight anymore. Yes, we will live in peace now. The whole jungle celebrated the new peace in the land. When the bat leader heard of this development, he went to the birds and asked to be a part of the celebration. But the bird leader remembered how the bat leader had refused to help the birds during the war and turned him and his kind away. No bird would even talk to them now. The bat leader knew that if he took his people to the beasts, they would simply tear them apart. And so he did not approach them. 
Hence, he and his entire kind lived in isolation without any friends in the jungle. Oh, I don't want to be alone, Tia. In that case, Tofu, you should not behave cunningly like the bat leader and you should inform the team that you want to join right away. Yes, Tia, I will do that right away. Thank you, Tia, for making me understand this. Tofu, it's your friend Kim. She needs some help from you. Tell her I'll call her later. Kim, Tofu will call you back. Families from the store. Why didn't you talk to her, Tofu? I'm watching TV. I don't want to talk to her right now. But she needed your help. That's okay. If it's urgent, she can call someone else. She's called the second time and you've refused to talk to her. That's mean, Tofu. Especially because I remember how she was always there when you needed help from her. What difference does it make? Hear it for yourself. It was Christmas Eve and Mary was waiting for her Uncle Peter. Each year he gave her a present on this day. Hello Mary. Wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank you Uncle. Merry Christmas to you too! Wow! It's a nutcracker! It's so lovely! Let me put it in the cabinet with my other toys. night when Mary was sleeping, a sound woke her up. What's that? Mice! So many of them! Mary saw that there were many, many mice running around on the floor of her room. And there was a stranger that was the Mice Queen who had seven heads. Oh no! Am I dreaming? How can this be? Mary is in trouble. Friends, let's go to her rescue. The brave Nutcracker spoke to all the soldiers that stood with him in the cabinet. The soldiers found courage in the Nutcracker's charge and they drew out their swords and jumped out of the cabinet. All of them attacked the mice with their swords, guns, 
and sugar cannons. But soon the nutcracker was surrounded by mice. I am surrounded. I can't free myself. Oh no! The nutcracker! Seeing the nutcracker surrounded, Mary took one of her shoes and sent it flying at the mice. But before she could see what happened, she fainted. The next morning she woke up and found herself in her own bed. She tried explaining to everyone what had happened, but no one believed her. Oh, why won't anyone believe me? I saw the mice and the seven-headed queen with my own eyes. I haven't saved the nutcracker. I believe you, Mary. I believe everything you've just said. I'll tell you an interesting story about the Nutcracker toy. About my toy? Yes. Many years ago, there lived a mice queen in the toy land's king's palace. One day, she lost seven of her sons to the traps laid by the king's men in the castle. Oh no! The angry queen cursed the princess and turned her into an ugly princess. The spell could be broken only if she could break the hardest nut. The poor princess! What happened then, uncle? The Nutcracker Prince helped the princess break the hardest nut. As soon as he had done that, the spell was lifted off the princess. However, the spell shifted on to the prince and he became ugly. The princess must have felt so sad. Quite the opposite. She forgot all about the prince, how he had helped her, and she chased him away. Later, Mary went to her room. And looked at the nutcracker. She now looked at him in a different light. And before she knew, she loved him. One day, the doorbell rang very early morning. Mary went to see who it was. It was a very handsome young boy. Hello. Can I help you? Uh, hello Mary. I am the Prince of Toyland. How can that be? You were cursed by the Mice Queen to be an ugly nutcracker. Your true love towards me has lifted the spell of me and made me handsome once again. Will you marry me? Yes! Mary said yes and became the princess of Toyland. She lived with the prince happily ever after. Uh, I am being the princess who forgot the nutcracker prince. Am I not? Absolutely, Tofu. Kim's always been there to help you. And now, when she needs your help, you're ignoring her. Oh, I feel terrible about the way I have behaved. Let me call up Kim and help her. 
don't forget to apologize to her. Thanks, Tia. I won't forget. What is the matter, Tofu? I wanted to be the class leader, Tia, but I didn't win the poetry contest last week, and today I accidentally dropped the fish bowl and it broke. My teacher had to put the class fish into plastic bags and take them home. Oh, yes. I'm sure I won't become the class leader now. I'm sure no one in class likes me now. Hmm. I understand why you feel like that, Tofu. But don't lose hope. Even the worst situations can lead to something nice. I don't think that can ever happen, Tia. Well, it happened to the musicians of Bremen. Musicians of Bremen? What happened to them? Musicians of Bremen. Once upon a time, a man had a donkey. When the donkey grew old and sick, the man decided to kill him and sell his skin. The donkey understood his master's plans and ran away and took the road to Bremen. I will go to Bremen and become a musician. On his way, he saw an old dog lying in the grass. Dog, what are you doing here? I have become so old. I cannot gather the sheep for my master like I used to. So my master beats me. Why don't you come with me to Bremen? We will become musicians there. The dog agreed and the two new friends continued their journey. In some time, they came upon a cat sitting by the road. Looking like the skies were about to come down on him. Cat, what's wrong with you? Why do you look so sullen? It is my mistress. I have grown old and cannot chase the mice like I used to. So she has planned to get rid of me by drowning me in the river. Oh, that's not nice. I have an idea. The donkey and I are going to Bremen to become musicians. Why don't you join us? You can sing a jolly tune too. The cat liked the idea very much and made his escape with his two new friends. They had only walked a while when they came upon a cock. He was singing without a stop. Cock, what is wrong with you? This is not the hour for you to sing. Well, my mistress is having a big dinner party over and she has instructed the cook to cook me for a soup. My head will be cut off this evening, so I am singing till my neck and throat are intact. Is that it? We all are going to Bremen to become musicians. Why don't you come with us? After all, 
you already know beats and tunes. And so the party set forth on their journey to Bremen, which was still very far. As night fell, they felt tired and hungry. We must find a spot to eat and rest for the night. Everybody agreed and they decided to look for a place to spend the night. In some time, they came upon a lonely house. Its lights were lit and they could hear the sounds of a gathering from inside. The cat climbed up a tree and peeped in from an open window. <laughs> it is a gang of robbers and they have delicious spread of meats and drinks before them. I could use a couple of bones with some meat right now. And I could with something to drink. My throat is parched. Let us find a way to drive the robbers away. The four friends huddled together and at last came up with a plan to drive the robbers away. The donkey put his front feet on the ledge of the window and the dog climbed over his back. The cat climbed on the dog and the cock flew on the top of the cat's head. Once they were ready, they all performed their music together. The donkey brayed, the dog barked, the cat mewed and the cock cockadoodled. The music was so loud that the windows of the house shook and threatened to come down upon the robbers. The robbers were scared by these unimaginable sounds and quickly flee from the house. As soon as they were gone, the four musicians took over the dining table and fed themselves full. Once they were done, they switched off the lights and went to sleep. I will sleep on the straw. I will sleep by the door. I will sleep upon the hearth by the warmth of the fireplace. I will sleep on this beam of the house. Soon they all fell asleep. A little away from the house, the robbers watched as the lights of the house went off. We shouldn't have been scared like this. One of you go back in and tell us what is going on inside the house. And so one of the men made his way back into the house. The house was so dark and quiet that he went to the kitchen to strike a light. But he mistook the cat's shiny eyes for coal and put a burning match to them. Shocked by the attack, the cat jumped on the robber and scratched his face. This scarred 
the robber and he ran towards the back of the door to find a way out of the house. But in the dark, he accidentally stepped on the dog that bit his leg. All the commotion woke the cock and he came flying down to land on the robber's head and cried. Ultimately, the donkey kicked him out of the house with his hind legs. The robber ran to the rest of the gang. Chief, the house is haunted. An evil witch lives there. She scratched my face. At the door stands a man with a knife. He cut my leg. In the backyard is a monster that hit me with a club. And on the roof sits a judge who screamed, Bring the knave up, do! Hearing this, the robbers got on their horses and left the house forever. But everything went so well for the four musicians that they decided to live in that house forever. And never made it to Bremen. So you see Tofu, even when you think that nothing is working out, all you have to do is keep trying and things will turn around. Thanks dear. I always feel so much better after talking to you. You're always welcome, Tofu. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.